this video we're going to be covering objective 7.4 and 7.5 together. Um, the main reason that I'm putting them together is because they're very much related and they follow the same kind of process and so that's really where we're going from this one. So the first um, objective is applying scale factors and combined scale factors to measurements using datums. So I'd mentioned in the previous um, in the previous one of the previous videos that I've done that um, scale factor is a word that we're going to be covering. So this is one of them. So scale factor is what happens when we're trying to take this round surface and squishing it onto a flat map. So th there's going to be distortion no matter what um, in many locations. In fact, the majority of your map is going to be distorted. Like just it's just the way it is. If you were to try to take the like the tin foil and trying to flatten it, keeping it totally flat without any wrinkles whatsoever, all the way around the tennis ball, it just doesn't happen. You just can't do that. So, um, so we need to stretch or shrink part of that that Earth surface to be able to put it onto that flat map. So a scale factor, you're going to see two different values. You're going to see a scale factor greater than one, and you're going to see scale factors less than one. If the scale factor is less than one, you actually make the surface smaller. So you can see that in this, this picture here. So this is the flat Earth. So you can imagine if I'm taking this like bubble on top and I need to push it all down onto the surface, I'm actually making it smaller. So, so that is um, the, the surface is reduced in that case. Now, if the scale factor is greater than one, I have to stretch the surface. So here I am increasing the surface as much as I possibly can, and um, I got to stretch it. So you can see that this is below, and just to bring it up, I just need to make it longer. So that is um, that's the idea. Where the paper is touching the Earth's surface, the scale factor is one, and there's no distortion. So we talked a little bit about that when we were talking about secant and um, tangent. So in this case, this is considered a secant surface, as it says there, because it cuts in two spots. If it only touched at one, for example here, we know that all of the scale factors would be greater than one, because if it's only touching here, there's nothing above it being squished down and being reduced. So that is, um, that's an introduction to this. So let's just hop right into the calculations. So here's my, my calculation. Now this looks very similar to every other um, formula I've given you. <laughs> everything is, you know, a ratio, everything. Everything I do in this class is a ratio. So um, my scale factor is my grid distance divided by my ground distance. Now, what is the difference between those two? So the grid distance is the distance calculated from the map projection coordinates. So the grid distance is the map. So if you go out into the, the, in, into the field, and let's say you're using a GPS and you put in UTM coordinates, well, UTM coordinates is grid coordinates because they are from a map projection. So because it's all in meters, therefore now that grid distance or that, that distance that meters on a map is actually a grid distance. Then I can also do ground distance, which means I'm standing on the ground and observing that distance. So this could be your um, total station measurement because um, you're actually there observing. And so you are physically there doing that. So there's no distortion when you are standing there, other than like atmospheric stuff, but that's all other fun entertainment that we can add into everything. But the actual measurement itself is considered to be accurate with no distortion. So that's the difference between these. So this is observed in real life. This is calculated or you know projected values. So to get our scale factor, we take our grid distance and we divide it by the ground distance. So this is really helpful when you're trying to find monuments in the field for surveying. Going back to that, to that ASCM sheet, right? If, if you need to determine a distance and it says, okay, this is where um, this monument is located and you are given coordinates of the next one, now you can calculate the distance in coordinates, then you've got to project it down with the scale factor to an actual ground distance to, to try to find it. 
And um, I, it's, it's helpful with ASCM sheets because you're like, oh, ASCM sheets, I can just go between them and it's already got the distance written on them. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, but if you are to go to like, you, need, you know the coordinates of a property pin, that's not published. So you know the coordinates of it, which the coordinates are going to be in UTM or 3TM coordinates. And then you have your ASCM that you're standing on. Now you got to figure out what is the observed distance so you can actually find that property pin so you don't have to dig up the entire property to try to find that pin. So and here is an example. So you have a measured distance between two points on a map that calculate to be 936.23 meters. You go with a total station to measure the distance and find it to be 935.72 meters. So it's out by a little bit. So what is the scale factor? So using this, we calculate it. We put the grid value, which is the map, divided by the ground value, which is your observed value, and we get 1.000545. So in this case, the distance is going to be stretched okay, on the map. So this is um, scale factor 1. This is one very simple example. So if you're finding that you have a regular error between your observed measurements and your actual calculated measurements, it's because of the scale factor. And you're going to find that, in, especially in mountainous areas, it makes it really interesting. So always keep in mind these scale factors. Then we also have a scale factor for elevation, and then we call this an elevation factor. And so this is all related to the radius of the Earth. So we take the radius of the Earth and we divide it by the radius of the Earth plus the height, the ellipsoidal height. So the radius of the Earth is, um, is known to be 6,371,000 6, meters. Okay, so you are welcome to look that up or I will give it to you. You do not need to memorize that number. So this, we, we use it just as a regular radius. I know that that radius is actually equivalent to, um, to a sphere because we use a normal number. If you can get the radius to where you are at that moment, then that's fantastic. Then it's obviously going to be a lot more accurate than using just like a spherical measurement. Um, but it's very unlikely that you're going to know the exact radius of where you're standing. But we use it, we use the general radius and then we add the height and then we, the reason we do this is because of that, that surface situation, the Earth's surface situation. So the further away we are from mean sea level, the more distortion there's going to be and more error we're going to find. So as you can imagine, we cut the Earth's surface, we're going through the Earth's surface with this piece of paper, and then we increase the height. Well, now we have to like, let's say we're doing it in the middle where we have to like reduce it. So they like, reduce our, our numbers. So we have our paper and we have an increased height. Now we've just got to squish it down even more. So that's what the distortion is. So it's that increase of, of, of that, that's an increase of the reduction. There we go. So that, that's why the number will suddenly become even smaller if we were having to reduce it. So here's an example. So the com combined scale factor is, um, is putting it all together. So we actually use the scale factor and the elevation factor. So I'm going to put them all together here because an elevation factor on its own doesn't really make any sense. So um, you're actually going to find the combined scale factor on, um, on the ASCM sheets because it does include that. So let's say you have to measure a distance between two points on a map that calculates to 1,762.32 meters. The distance is at an ellipsoidal elevation of 1,031.34 um, meters. You measure the same distance to be 1,764.96 meters. What is the combined scale factor? So let's pause for a moment. Which measurement is, a, is considered my ground measurement? The ground measurement is the 1,764.96 meters. That is the observed measurement, so that's ground. Then we have the calculated, which is the 1,762.32. That is my grid measurement, so the calculated measurement. 
So we apply the, the grid over ground and we come up with a scale factor of 0 0.998504. Then we calculate the elevation factor. So we have a height and it's ellipsoidal in this case. We have an ellipsoidal height of 1031.34 meters. So going down there, we're just going to add that um, just because that's all the, the information that we have. So obviously that at that measurement there, it's close enough to the um, to the geoid. So if you had to do a geoid, geoidal measurement, you would actually go back and adjust that if, if you had the information. So we're just going to use what we're given. So we have the radius of the Earth th that we look up, and that is 6,371,000. And then we're going to add on the bot on the denominator. We're going to add the 1,031,34, and that gives me an elevation factor of 0 0.999838. Then we're going to combine them together. So we get the combined scale factor. We multiply the two across, and we be we come up with the answer of 0 0.9983424. So that is the combined scale factor. So what that would mean is that if I'm going to do any other measurement from the point that I am at, if I've calculated the distance here, I need to apply this, this scale factor. Okay, and that goes across because if I only have this elevation, then I'm going to assume that everything's flat or close to it because really a few decimals is not going to <laughs> make a huge difference when you're dealing with the radius of the Earth. But um, make sure that you apply the scale factor so you can get really close to your point because otherwise you're you, you're going to have an error based on that and that goes for pretty much every observed um, er, every observed measurement that you have to put into like UTM or 3TM coordinates it's really important that you look at that so this is how you calculate the scale factor um, so this is something that you would do when you are in the field uh, and maybe there's no ASCMs close by or you're not given a scale factor of that area so, as I said, I was going to cover the two objectives. So we're going to move into actually looking at coordinates and just not so much like the coordinates themselves, but the measurements themselves. So it's kind of moving around those those three equations that I just taught. So um, objective 7.5 is grid coordinates to ground coordinates. So if you're using ASCM sheets, uh, you are given the scale factor. And then you can use the equations that I have given you there. So for example here, this is um, a third example. So your coordinates on two ASCM sheets are in UTM coordinates. I can tell that just by looking at the numbers and we will talk about that in the next objective in the next video. And um, so we have two, a two ASCM sheets. They're at an average elevation of 9, 934.23. Are they at the exact elevation? No, they're an average. So I'm just going to use the average elevation between the two. Um, as long as there's not a great big change between them, I should be okay to use an average. If there's a large change, then you'll have to do things a little bit differently. But because I only have two points, right? Like I have two points and I have a distance between them. So I need to, like, even if it's at an angle, the, the best elevation I'm going to get is the average. So I'm going to use that average. So the combined scale factor at this location is listed at 0 0.999934, and that that's my combined scale factor. Okay. So I'm going to go down here. I've got to figure out the grid distance. So I calculate the grid distance using my coordinates, which you guys know how to do using Pythagorean's theorem. And so we get the distance of 17. 17,304.37 meters, so 17 kilometers. I'm going to adjust the, figure out the elevation factor from the numbers I've been given. So I have my radius of the earth and the height that I was given, and there's my elevation factor. So I have two things now. I have the elevation factor and I have the combined scale factor. So I'm going to take my my combined scale factor formula and I'm going to move it around so that I have the combined scale factor and the elevation factor on the same side. Just a sec. Math yes, that works mathematically. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got that upside down, but no, I don't. I have it right. So, <laughs> like, I did the math several times. <laughs> okay, so here's the combined scale factor. So we have that and then the elevation factor on the bottom, which is the one here. Then we get our our actual scale factor here. 
which is at 1.0008. So to calculate the ground distance that I would actually observe, I apply my, um, my scale factor calculation with the grid over ground. I'm going to move it around, so now I have my scale factor here. So I take my 17,304.37 and I divide it by 1.0008 and I get my observed distance of 17,302.99. So notice that it's off by 2 meters. That does make a difference, right? If you are going to dig a hole, do you want to be 2 meters out? Probably not. So these scale factors can have a big impact, especially over longer distances. So that's the calculations. There is a worksheet that you can go through. Um, I have, uh, it, it's part of your workbook. Work through these. The idea behind this one is to try to find my errors. So I've purposely planted mathematical errors in here and misreadings of, of examples. So I want you to go through, identify where those are and recalculate it so that you have a correct number. Okay, so that, and then we're going to be discussing this stuff um, later. And then look at that, I've got an extra page in there. So, um, so make sure you go through all of them. And then also do your own, the self-practice. So this will also be part of your, your, cal er, your discussion online. So work through these, go to this additional resources, you'll be able to check that out and learn more and see more grid coordinate information. Um, but that is that this handout will also be included in your book, so take a look at that as well to help you through some more examples. And then we can always discuss it if you need to during like a tutorial time. So we will be moving on to Objective 7.6 at the in the next video, and which talks about finally the UTM and the Lambert Conic Conformal.